Bora 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 City, it is time to check out your new magazine. Bora 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 City. Hey. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome back to Shiki. So today we're going to be watching Army YouTube is a mess. Now this was requested to me all the time in my live stream. Uh, Bora, thank you so much for another video. Now if you don't know about Bora City, you should definitely... Hit that a subscribe button. Bora City Magazine, <clears throat> really, 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 really informative and well thought out, and videos that take a lot of time and effort to make. Actually, this is not easy at all. But um, yeah, we're gonna watch this, and there's some other videos of yours that we're gonna watch eventually. I'm just getting back into the YouTube uh, thing. I have a lot of free time, so uh, it's nice to be back. And before we get started into watching this video, I wanted to uh, re remind you that Take Two comes out later today. Make sure you stream it. Uh, make sure you show it support. And let's keep, uh, you know, this nice Festa month flowing. Let's go. There are different ways to consume BTS content and depending on which platform you spend the most time, your experience will be different. But being on ARMY TikTok or ARMY Twitter is different from being on ARMY YouTube because the whole fandom is on YouTube at some point, since almost all BTS's content is in video format. Music videos, live performances, concerts, in reviews, behind the scenes and run BTS episodes are easily accessible on YouTube. But you still may watch all of this content on YouTube and not necessarily be considered a YouTube army. There isn't an official definition of what a YouTube army is because these are just internet or fandom terms. But I see that it usually refers to the platform from which you consume BTS content the most. Since most of BTS official content is on YouTube, there isn't really a way to be an army and not watch YouTube like there's a way to be an army but not have a Twitter or TikTok account. And I think that creates a big problem because all of BTS content is in this platform, but the platform is a mess. Twitter army is one of the most stressful platforms because there are so many useless conversations, but at least there are conversations. Twitter armies are informed and up to date. It's on Twitter where armies organize basically all of the charity, streaming and buying projects. TikTok army is highly affected by an algorithm that relates BTS content with K-pop content, creating another mess. But once you find the good accounts and fall into the right algorithm, it can be fun at least. On the other hand, YouTube ARMY is a space that doesn't allow much productive conversation to happen between armies, and instead promotes cloud chasing BTS reactors, fake BTS edits, and K-pop drama channels. Wow, what a transition. Wow. Great intro, great intro. Let's see. The BTS reaction channel space here on YouTube is a little tricky. I feel like sometimes armies are too harsh on reaction channels and other times they're too gullible. My first video ever was about BTS reaction channels and how I categorize them. My conclusion was that reaction channels are okay when they are simply genuine and open-minded. But it's been exactly a year since I made that video and my opinions have changed a little because of two reasons. Number one, there are reaction channels reacting to my videos on content controversial topics, showing a new face I didn't expect from them. And number two, J-Hope and J-Cole's on the street music video has brought a new big wave of BTS reaction channels. And some of these don't seem interested in BTS, they seem interested in ARMY's engagement. And I mm. guess I unintentionally started viewing reaction channels a little more critically, because I now truly see the way armies interact with them. This may sound like a different topic, but let me explain why the extreme and unjustifiable popularity of BTS reaction channels can damage the army's base on YouTube. I always see people criticizing the very concept of reaction channels because they are not real content. There's little to non-creative or analytical input in the majority of these videos. People defending reaction channels will talk about good versus bad reaction channels, and they will use channels like Chloe and Noel as examples of good reaction channels, but their quote-unquote reactions were more commentary than anything else, and the commentary space is not the same as the reaction space. It's true that their videos were not video essays or comedy sketches, and they were reacting for the first time to other people's content, but they prioritized their commentary and jokes. They even said that they would sit down and react to lots of videos, but if they thought they were not contributing much to the conversation or being entertaining enough, they would not upload the reaction. In other words, they valued the quality of their content. Now, I'm not criticizing every single BTS reaction channel, because there is an entertainment component that I think is just as valid as meaningful commentary. 
Harry. Take this channel for example. He is a typical K-pop YouTuber I talk about in my first video about reaction channels, but he appears more genuine than most I've seen. But the criticism relies on the fact that this type of channels react to so much content that they won't really be able to process all the content they are watching. This channel mm. reacted to one of my videos two times oh. and he didn't remember watching it before. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh, this one's a toughie. This one's. Uh, ouch. Or he pretended like he didn't watch it just to watch it again. That is what's going to happen when you react to 10 videos a day. Is it going to be entertaining? Sometimes it can be, but it won't be very substantial. Now, if you tell me who cares if it's substantial or not, I don't want insightfulness, I want entertainment. I would say that is completely fine and valid, but don't treat these reaction channels as more than they are. They are normal people just like you and me sharing a vague opinion on every topic they can. Supposedly, they are here to be a fan or to learn along with us. They are not the artists, BTS are. And don't tell me that some reactors also make music or something else on the side, because BTS are. And don't they are here to be a fan or to learn along with us. They are not the artists. BTS are. And, and here's why I want to pause and give my first uh, piece of input. I think, Bora, you're uh, completely right. Spot on. 100% spot on. Now, I'm speaking for myself. I'll let you do the criticizing, but I'm speaking for myself. Uh, what you said, uh, normal people. Yes. I am a normal person. I'm a normal guy. There's nothing special about me. Uh, there's no difference between me and whoever is watching me. The only difference is that I'm on camera. Now, that does not make me famous. That does not make me someone special. Literally. Uh, I'm so thankful you said that because that's how I felt the entire time personally when I've been on uh, YouTube and making videos here. I don't consider myself like... Oh, no. Like, I, I have a couple of interests in life. I love BTS, of course. BTS, when it comes to music, BTS. BTS is bigger than music, though. But on the side that you don't see me do on the channel, sports. I am a sports fanatic. I love sports. I spend a lot of time watching sports. And then the third one is games. I love video games. Those three make up pretty much my entire hobby. Right? And me sitting here... Sharing my love, all I'm doing is sharing my love and my joy of BTS with you guys. I am literally, every time, I am so shocked. Like, it doesn't matter if I gain a million subscribers, 5 million, uh, 5 million subscribers, 500,000 subscribers. It's not going to change who I am. We're, we're here together to share our love of BTS because I truly feel the same. Like, I am nothing. I feel like I am, I am nothing special. There's nothing. It's just, we're just here to watch bts and you know i love getting the feedback because i'll be completely honest i don't have uh, a lot of friends that i can hang out with in my daily life and it's a new city so i'm pretty much by myself and i'm not exactly the most social person so i keep to myself i'm by, by myself most of the time uh and the interaction that i get socially is when i post a video uh, most of the time or or talk to you guys so uh, for me, I am feeling blessed. I feel like I'm the lucky one because not only can I share what I love so much and I found a community that's accepted me and, you know, I have BTS in my life, I have ARMY in my life. I feel like I am the lucky one. And this, this resonates so much with me. They are not the artists BTS are. You know, we're here for BTS. That's why the screen on my channel is so big. You know, I could have slimmed it down but I'm not trying to have you focus too much on me, you know, uh, <laughs> preferably you don't focus on me at all. But yes, I definitely agree with Bora here, 100%. And don't tell me that some reactors also make music or something else on the side, because that is not what their audience is following them for. The audience follows them for their reactions to content the audience already likes, and that's mm. something armies need to recognize before deciding whether or not to follow them. But that's not what I see most YouTube armies doing. Sometimes armies see a person saying positive thing after positive thing about BTS, and that is justification enough to defend these random people we don't really know. Just look at the latest controversy. This reaction channel was rapidly growing after he reacted to on the street i don't know who the fuck this is who is this the chinese name but some armies noticed that he 
reacted to on the street. I don't know who the fuck this is. Who is this? The Chinese name. But some. Really? Come on. Really? Come on. It's 2023. You should know better. Oh, I. Ha Immediately, bad taste. Immediately. Some armies notice that he follows, shares the misogynistic ideas, and the Chinese name. But some armies notice that he follows. Shares the misogynistic ideas and expresses the hustle culture. I quit my job for YouTube. Oh, I'm YouTube back passive income. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. Sorry for pausing again so fast, but this is the problem. See, this is why I had a conversation on Discord with some of my um, some of my uh, people in the community. I would like to call them family. You know, you guys, the community, I call them family. But um, we talked about this, like paid reactions. Like Patreon, for example, you know, it the reason there's a ton of reasons why I won't do them, but one of the reasons is also like it becomes a job. Then, me loving BTS is not a job. Anything you do, when you go from enjoying enjoying what it is and it turns into a job, something you feel like you have to do for a specific motive, it takes the fun out of it. Obsession Just me. of the non misogynist and human trafficker Andrew Tate. While still reacting to BTS and supposedly reading their lyrics and understanding their message, I'm reading the lyrics, yeah, I'm reading the lyrics. I don't give a fuck about the lyrics. This guy was writing disgusting. What? I'm reading the lyrics, I don't know the lyrics, I don't care about the lyrics. Things about women on Facebook, a platform he promoted on his BTS reaction videos. Oh, come on, really? What are these comments? Ugh. Look, I'll be completely honest. I'll be completely honest. It seems like this person is obsessed with women. Yet all he tries to do here is talk down to them or like berate them. Look, let's be completely honest. You're not even a millimeter above any woman out there. Let's just let's just make make this like let's just say it how it is. You're here, women are here. You're not better than anyone. In fact, this acts this is actually a very bad look on you. I don't know why people find it okay to sit here. Like you talking about women this way is not gonna make you more of a man. It's not gonna make you more manlier. It's not gonna make you look some type of way. This is just the reality. I don't know what this tough act is coming from, but it's not it. Look, I have one of the most incredible male role models in my life, and he's my father. I have seen how my father treats my mother, and I have learned so much. I have learned so much. And I'm thankful that I had that sort of role model, but I feel like at some point you have to ask yourself, that's gender aside, that's another human being. Like, why are you acting like you're better than someone? Like, why do you think that it's okay to talk about this way, about another gender? It makes no sense. People need to stop doing that. You should not talk down on women. And of course, vice versa. But this is just not okay. After he was called out by some of his subscribers, his response was simply, Proof I hate women. So, no way. So someone did. This reached even more people and his response was even worse. He incorrectly used an RM quote about change as an excuse for his behavior. 
he incorrectly used an RM quote about change as an excuse for his behavior. He criticized people for digging up his comment quote about You know what, there's... Learning, 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 and no, no one tells anyone that you won't ever make a mistake again. But I feel like taking the appropriate step to make up for said mistakes. So if you make a mistake, you can't just sweep it under the rug and act like it didn't happen, right? It, it doesn't work like that. Like, it's not, you can't just go rob a store and then go back into the store next day and be like, I'm not the same person I was a day ago. And then be like, oh, okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. We're not going to press charges. That's just not how it works. Like, life isn't isn't like that. You know, you make a mistake. Take the time. Honestly, if you want to talk about being a man, take the time and be responsible. Be a responsible person and make make up for your mistakes. Take the time to, first of all, acknowledge them. I don't know. About change as an excuse for his behavior. He criticized people for digging up his comments from a long time ago, although the Facebook ones were from only three months prior, and the Instagram ones were from just the day before. And in my opinion, the worst decision he made was to, just like Andrew Tate, never ever apologize. He actually Whoa. kept saying that he won't apologize. He what? He insulted his own subscribers? Insulted his own subscribers and then deleted tons of comments calling him out and asking for an apology. When I wow. see the people that be reacting to me, putting me in a negative light, these girls, they, they be ugly as hell. They, what? They be ugly as hell. It ain't like you a real pretty ass female just like, oh my god, I can't stand the mirror. His beauty. What was all this talk about? Prove me and this was four months old. Is that, is that how you address it? Those and community posts ranting non-stop are all gone and he's regaining the subscribers he lost. Now, I will normally not care about guys like him, but it honestly surprised me the fact that there were and still are thousands of armies defending him. If you don't care about BTS's message and still want to follow guys like this simply because they react to BTS, that is your right. I don't understand what the problem is with uh, with apologizing. I don't know what the, why people are so afraid of apologizing. What in saying sorry or I'm sorry uh, makes makes a person like why is that a bad look? Why why do you think saying sorry for something you did wrong? Why is that frowned upon? Why is that like ugh, I, I'm not gonna apologize to them? I'm not gonna apologize. Like what do you think that's gonna do? I feel like apologizing is one of the most important things that you can learn. When I first thought that I was one of the first things that I was taught by my parents, apologizing is never wrong. Like you're never wrong for apologizing. It's it's not a bad look to say I'm sorry. Of course you have to mean it though. Like you can't just be like oh I'm so sorry, and then go and do the same thing again. But like taking the time to understand and apologizing is a vital part. I feel like it's a vital part of a person. If a person can apologize, that means they believe they can never do any wrong. And there's no one that exists that never does wrong, like literally, no one. Everyone can make a small mistake, a big mistake, you never know, right? But it's how you react to said things. It's how you deal with these mistakes. So if you do something you don't like, how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to apologize and learn from it? Or are you going to go and do the same thing again? There's nothing wrong with apologizing, just apologize. I guess. But I would suggest to not get excited and become a faithful subscriber of every channel reacting to BTS who seems nice. This is just a weird theory of mine, but I've seen it happen so many times. Whenever there's a new charismatic YouTuber reacting to BTS, they will almost automatically gain 10,000 subscribers. Then they will go up little by little, but the fact that those 10,000 subscribers are almost guaranteed is concerning. I understand why it's exciting to see people become armies, but 
once they start gaining thousands of followers and money, not only from YouTube but from Patreon for content that I barely consider content, then their intentions can change. You may not always notice their real motivations because they are not as dumb as this guy who guided his subscribers to the comments that will eventually harm his channel. But you need to be a little skeptical. Don't subscribe or blindly trust and support every person who seems nice and open-minded. We can be welcoming by giving them information and requests, while at the same time being a tough audience, a nice, welcoming, tough audience. So how can we make sure that we are not following someone who may be like this YouTuber in secret? There's really no way to know, but I personally find it really difficult to subscribe to a channel that has misleading thumbnails or titles, also known as clickbait. Before we get into this, I wanted to touch upon the Patreon stuff uh, for a moment. Just Let me just, uh, I gotta use the bathroom real quick. Okay, I'm back. So, um, regarding the Patreon real quick, that's, I totally agree with you once again. Um, I can't see myself putting myself uh, making paid Patreon posts and use ARMY's love for BTS to watch me react to it. No, we're here for BTS. I'm not doing anything special. I am not going to monetize me sitting here and enjoying. Like, I'm literally, I'm having fun watching BTS. Why would I monetize it? I just don't. Personally, I'm speaking for myself. I'm not any of them. But personally, why would I monetize something that I enjoy doing, right? It's not like I'm making a product. It's not like I'm selling you something. Like I'm making this, right? It's one thing to get support. If someone wants to donate to you for just showing some love or showing some support, that's different. But you, but me putting, me gatekeeping reactions, reactions is different in my opinion. It's, it's, not something that I can ever do personally. Moving on. I see some armies saying that there are some YouTube channels that clickbait a lot, but they are so nice and respectful in the actual video. And I'm sorry, but you just fell for their tactic. Let's learn something from this situation. Once a YouTube reaction channel starts getting clicks and money, their honest interest in BTS may become interest in BTS's audience, in ARMY's mm. engagement. So what I do is before clicking on a new reaction video, I go to their channel and see if that first time reacting to BTS is true or not. Because the amount of times I've seen people title their videos first time reacting to BTS when they've been reacting for months or even years it's annoying I feel like the reaction channels who constantly clickbait their videos tend to be money hungry their content is lazy to begin with and tricking an audience known to be an easy audience just feels cheap if they don't like the title format of artist song reaction they can be creative I see what you did there BTS take two Coming out later today. It's possible, I've seen it. But there's no reason for this creativity to be deceiving. This is just a little personal opinion, but I find it deceiving and some type of clickbait the way some channels don't write the word reaction whenever they react to my videos, making it look like they are the ones about to do the commentary instead of someone else. Again, this goes back to the discourse on commentary channels versus reaction channels. I believe in transformative content because that's what I do. I don't have any problem with YouTubers reacting to my videos, but I don't like it when reaction channels present themselves as commentary channels because that's not what they are. If they are good in their reaction field, there's no reason to clickbait viewers. I want to believe that some of these channels do it unintentionally, but I can sense that others clearly know what they're doing. We also need to pay attention and stay away from misleading or exaggerated titles like Hater reacts to BTS for the first time, will I change my mind? That is just icky. Don't give them the attention they are desperately asking for. Another thing I do is a personal preference, but if I see that a channel is reacting to every single K-pop group in existence, I don't bother watching their BTS reactions because they tend to say positive comments about everyone to every fandom's engagement. I'm especially careful with those channels who react to 10 videos a day because it's mostly low quality commentary. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> had to go up to 8x. <laughs> 
It's almost never about having a genuine or entertaining conversation. It's about mass producing reactions people are guaranteed to watch. There's no love or care for the quote unquote content they make. It's all about those thousands of army views. I remember there were these four guys who used to react to 10 videos a day with zero commentary. And I love these guys so much because they were genuinely so bad, it was fascinating. They would also react to my videos and one time they said something stupid in one of my controversial videos and they received some criticism from armies. So they deleted the video and continued reacting to my videos like nothing happened. They are now reacting to the same videos with other people, you know, monetizing the same content twice. But it's still fascinating, their dedication to be as blue plan as possible and attract the worst of K-pop communities like shippers and solos should go to the history books. There is also this other channel that I find similar, but they are better at covering their tracks. They also gain a lot of subscribers because they they got a ton of views as well. React to 10 videos a day, but they were also nice and open-minded. However, once they reacted to one of my videos that requires K-pop fans to think a little about the industry they stand, they got defensive. I believe this is because they, just like the majority of K-pop reactors, love everything and everyone, and they don't want to think critically about anything. So there's no real analysis, because analysis sometimes leads to criticism, and they think that their audience just want to hear praises for everyone. So they did an Amir. They started in Insulting their audience in their comments and then they deleted their reaction these are the only mentions of them deleting their video and comments i could find that redemption 46 channel getting offended over why there's no redemption 46 channel reacted to one of my videos got mad about my comments and a certain media people received backlash for it so how does it the comments and then delete their reaction pretending like nothing happened what's with this trend like pretend like nothing happened oh my god you noticed too i know oh Wait, someone came to my channel, actually. Someone came to my channel and commented about this. I'm going to see if I can find it, though. Just, just give me one moment. Okay, so this is the comment, right? Five months ago, I have deleted their name just for uh, privacy's sake. Here's, like... Like, seriously, I've just seen this channel, Redemption Something, and they watch Bora City's There Is No Next BTS video, and they said that they think that Super M and BTS raw talents are on the same level. And they think that Jumping and Joping song lyrics is equally good as BTS's lyrics. They literally said in the comment section that BTS is just another Coke or a Pepsi. They even said that armies are super obsessed and violently organizing everything to stream BTS songs and get numbers. And yet... They have the audacity to call themselves ARMY. To me, it's disrespectful to ARMY and BTS. I'm so angry and annoyed. I hope ARMY teaches, teaches them a lesson. So this is actually what you're talking about. I remember some reading something like this. This is what you're talking about. Right? Nah, nah, Bora. I got you. Let's go. So future subscribers, including armies, cannot find any of this. These type of reaction channels who upload 10 videos a day don't necessarily use clickbait on their thumbnails, but I consider the presentation of their channels some form of misleading content. These reactions after reactions can attract an excited fan looking for a channel with lots of reactions to their favorite artists, but they lack commentary and are almost never insightful or entertaining. So talking about commentary channels with deceiving clickbait, I'm going to address the best in this field k-pop drama channels well i do really like bts but not because for them but because for me like <laughs> i want i want more bts so that i can sustain my channel i think one of you know what i i don't like anything that he said but at least he's not pretending at least he's not pretending but honestly i don't find that cool like come on Ah, cool. The main reasons the YouTube army space is not as productive as Twitter army or even TikTok army is because we don't actually have a space here. And if we do, it comes with conditions. Twitter armies and sometimes TikTok armies surround themselves and have conversations with other armies. But YouTube armies interact most of the time under a borrowed space, a YouTuber's comment section, Ooh, and this can points. create some problems. Reaction channels who react to BTS are constantly learning and they don't know or care to share army's goals, plans, and guides. There are exceptions like Shiki and XLS. <laughs> no! I mean, yes! <laughs> we're here. We're not, we're not featured in a bad way. <laughs> yes! Woo! Oh my god, Bora. How do you find this? <laughs> oh lord, look at me. I used to be like 100, 106 kgs there. 100, 106.7. Now I'm, now I'm 884.
Um, I'm just kidding. But honestly, I didn't expect this here. So. <laughs> Not like this. I heard some people were like, you know, uh, Bora mentioned you. Now, I didn't expect in this way, but... Oh lord. But they really are exceptions. The Thank only you, conversation in a YouTuber's comment section is even worse when our borrowed space is a K-pop drama channel. You just need to see some of their thumbnails. K-pop drama channels have some of the most disgusting clickbait I've seen in my life. And it really bothers me that I've seen the same justification for them. They have horrible clickbait but their actual video is respectful. I don't care. Mm. This type of really disgusting and false titles and thumbnails with bland commentary just prove that all K-pop drama channels want are those ARMY clicks without facing the consequences of misleading ARMY. I suggest to not engage with these videos at all. Don't click them. Don't watch them. Don't believe their alarming titles and thumbnails. Just Look at them. This one says, OMG, Jungkook and Jimin attend Suga brother wedding in Seoul, BTS at wedding event. None of this is real. Suga was not at his brother's wedding. It was a famous hairstylist wedding. Jungkook and Jimin were not there at all. These pictures are just very bad Photoshop. The worst part is that once this K-pop drama channel faked this news, other channels copied it. This is an insane amount of people being misinformed. This other one says, RM live on Weavers with Jungkook announced says military enlistment and in the thumbnail arm says i'm going to military and jungkook responds hyun please don't leave None are you kidding real. me namjoon wasn't live on weavers jungkook has never said any of this in any of his live streams there was no military announcement at all this one is crazy it says jungkook at police station after stalker arrested and takes action against sasen again none of this is true there was no jungkook at police station no stalker arrested no sasen no anything it was all completely made up but people believed it and i'm not showing the worst some k-pop drama Channels, clickbait scandals surrounding are you actually kidding me nah nah like we have gone too far i feel like as a society there's just not do people just not hold back anymore what on earth am i reading are you kidding me are you actually kidding me? This is absolutely disgusting. Cinewood Hub, you need to be ashamed of yourself. I don't care if you if you are donating money to charity. Once I click this video, I don't care. This is absolutely disgusting. It's immoral. It's not okay. Really? Come on. It's these channels. Of course, of course it's these channels. I don't care how nice they seem or what they do. This is unacceptable. Unequivocally unacceptable. Not okay in any way. Honestly, this actually makes me really upset because someone sat there and made this thumbnail. Someone sat there and did this for the sake of wrenching the hearts of ARMY and scaring people into clicking this just so you can get some numbers and some money. Absolutely not okay. Genuinely, this is this is literally did like on a scale of one to ten this is a zero this is zero you cannot do this v in hospital like come on you know what this does to people what energy are you putting out there you know how much people adore bts how much we love them so you know what i actually got caught with one of the other ones that that bora showed earlier it was it was um the military one i was i was like what and then I was like, oh, of course, it's that channel. And then I immediately like, don't recommend this stuff. Look, please, like you guys need to, you like you can't do this. You know, people go on to YouTube to find fun things to do. Now, I don't know why these get promoted as well, but like they pop up when you search for something. Like you search for like Jungkook, and then that comes up. Or you search for like V, and something like this comes up. This is not okay. In case something happens, I love you guys. Honestly, this actually makes me really upset. It's really difficult to make me upset, but this is just not okay. People, you're playing with people's emotions, and most of all, you're you're manipulating and twisting what these guys are doing. They have families. They have people they love, people that love them. No one deserves to be taken advantage of like this for your pocket or your views. Absolutely no. I don't know how YouTube allows this to happen. I don't care. 
Like this is not okay. This is not, I don't consider this regular clickbait. Look, I have some clickbait videos on my, on my channel. They're all for the sake of either pranking you guys into something funny and hopefully make you laugh or it's to, to uh, share some stuff about voting, right? This is not clickbait. Someone sat there and, and typed this. If you love BTS, if you actually are an army, if you love BTS, you would never have it in your heart to make something like this. Absolutely not. No way. If you have any shred of humanity, you would not do this. I don't care. Because, you know, it reaches a point where the people who are doing this, they're not thinking of them as people anymore, but they're thinking of them as tools to reach their goals, you know, means to get to their end. That's not okay. Like, remember, there are people, just because they're insanely famous, incredibly talented, and all of that, which they totally deserve, does not make it okay for you to do this. I don't care what video is behind this. I genuinely don't. Yes, I am ranting because this is this has to stop. This is not okay. You know how many people, ARMY as well, go onto YouTube and then YouTube out of nowhere recommends one of these videos and you just get shocked. You get like a jump scare. You feel really bad. You press it and it's nothing. It's not going to make it okay. Like, it's not, it's, we're not going to be like, oh, thank God. Oh, you know what? Cool video. No. You know what? If you want to, like, why don't you just use talents instead? Be talented. Stop using clickbait. If you're going to use clickbait, use it for something good. This is not good. I don't care how nice the person is behind. I haven't watched any of their videos. The only person that I saw was this one that I pressed once and then I learned my lesson. Uh, because I also was one of those people who got tricked by this. Let's be honest. This is not okay. This should be this this should be against some sort of a guideline. Like this is not just clickbait. Okay? I feel like you're taking advantage of army. You're I'm not going to say army, right? You're taking advantage of people. It's actually really upsetting me that someone sat there and made this. Someone sat there and made this. People are already sad about J-Hope going into the military. People are already like feeling down over the entire thing that's happening. And this is how you, this is your way. Look, 180,000 views. 180,000 views in what? In one month? Look, they just photoshopped like someone in a bed and photoshopped J-Hope's J -Hope's face on it. Not cool. Not cool. I know someone will be like, you know, Shiki, calm down. I am calm, kinda. But this is, I find this to be like really nasty. Like this is, you know what? I would rather someone come and insult me every morning than see stuff like this. This is, this is honestly awful. No, no, no. This needs to, this needs to stop. People need to do this. Now, I'm going to put some timestamps so you can skip this rant of mine. But let's be honest. What are your thoughts about this? Do you think this is okay? I don't think this is okay. Why are you doing this to them? Don't tell me you're an army. Don't, 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 don't show me no merch. Don't say you've done this and done that. I don't care about that. What you're doing is honestly unethical. It's not okay. It's not okay. What are you, TMZ? Death and illness. It's truly disgusting. I just don't want others to think I'm crazy. I just don't want others to think I'm crazy. What is this? Jungle cries. What is this? But this is cr V scene bleeding. Oh, come on. And then and then you're like putting putting it. Let me remind you that Taeyong and Hive sued this type of K-pop drama channels from South Korea, but they cannot well, do the same with international them. channels because the defamation laws are different in every country. So let's do our part. These channels damage BTS and make YouTube ARMY paranoid for no reason. Exactly. These channels make a lot of money by fooling armies, and I assure you that in their comment sections there won't be a single productive conversation about our fandom goals or guys. It's useless conversation only they're literally just taking advantage of army and while they're doing you know what while they're doing it they're damaging people and using bts come on um, bro. 
Oh, Sugar Army. Not everything is completely horrible in ARMY YouTube. Some of the most entertaining content are BTS funny videos and edits. These are actually pretty successful at attracting a lot of new fans. However, there are some channels and an audience of millions who think it's funny to add fake subtitles to videos of BTS reacting to their own videos and making it seem like they're reacting to something else. And I just don't understand why someone would enjoy this. It's not only fake, but it's also boring. I even see some comments with requests to make fake subtitles to another video. They are giving fake reaction ideas. This type of audience is also the same audience who loves those nonsense voting community polls. So this is the YouTube army slash K-pop conversation that has thousands and thousands of people participating. Who is your favorite idol with double eyelids? 800,000 votes. And the comments? All of them to be honest. They are a hot dancer, a short hair goddess, a rap god and a beautiful dancer. Mm, it's all about double eyelids. But this is about double eyelids, not about hair, dance or rap, because in that case, these others are better. I know and I like all of their eyelids. This one is my favorite. Favorite K-pop idol with no small. This is a thing. Favorite K-pop idol with a mole on their nose. Half a million votes. These are the comments. I can't vote between Tae and Jungkook. Both are my favorites. The question is, which idol have mole on nose? And it's Tae. I think you should read the question first. Well, Jungkook also have mole on nose. And the question says, favorite idol with no small. Apparently, all the idols mentioned here have them. Today, I got to know Jungkook got mole on nose. Maybe I forgot, I don't know. Who cares? Why are we talking about this? Why does favorite vampire in K-pop receive 750,000 votes? Now, I would recommend to not send hate to any comments or even the channels starting these conversations because by the language I see in some community posts and comment sections, some channels with thousands of subscribers are literal kids. I'm talking 12 years old and younger. The real problem comes when these videos, posts and comments are hyped up while comments informing about a new song, a current voting or important news receive criticism. The amount of times I've seen people write, it's not that serious, BTS doesn't need our help and encouraging to not stream is concerning. The it is concerning because, once again Bora hits the nail on the head, it's concerning because it's not just one person saying these things, it's more than one person saying these things. And all of a sudden, you have a huge amount of people. But yes, honestly, these three channels, ashamed of yourself, really. Same thing with the ones that were mentioned in the beginning. I'm, I forgot their names already. <laughs> this type of content is what gets recommended to YouTube armies. These are our conversations, and I hope we can change this. Yeah, yeah. I ask on Twitter if there's any reliable army channel that covers BTS news. Oh, there's one I know. I think it's Michaela. Mickey? Most of the answers were sad, but here are some of their suggestions. <laughs> Why am I there? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, hold up. Cheeky. <laughs> What? Oh, I got a really bad headache. Oh, there, there is Mik Mikilala. Why am I there? Someone, someone said my name. <laughs> Look, Bangtang News with Shiki hasn't been here forever. Like genuinely, I know about Jose. I know about Mikilala. I don't know about these other ones, but okay, cool. Oh, we got some like from the Korean side. I'm gonna check this out as well. <laughs> but genuinely, I don't know what I'm doing here, everyone. Uh, I do make updates about votings, and I do get kind of uh, repetitive. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> you know what? Since I was featured here, I will do what's right. I will bring back back news with Shiki. Yes, give me one moment. Hello, everyone. Um. Uh, Bangtan News with Shiki will resume uh, thanks to Bora and uh, the people who, <laughs> who recommend me. I do talk about votings, but you know, the, the new segment will we'll come back. Bangtan News with Shiki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's, uh, let's, let's continue. <sighs> what? 
Wow, we got two cameos on Bora's Any video. reliable army channel that covers BTS news. Most of the answers were sad, but here are some of their suggestions. Proceed with a lot of caution, however, because not everyone agrees. Remember to be a tough audience. Check how their channel looks before watching their videos. Check that they are not sharing rumors or unofficial information from Sasengs or the paparazzi. Watch multiple videos and decide by yourself if their content is too K-pop or too invasive or too attention-seeking or too clickbaity for you. But I would still recommend you to consider joining ARMY Twitter because it's fast. The negative side is that there can be a lot of toxicity, so to have a good experience there you will have to clean your TL, which is basically blocking some toxic accounts that tweet misinformation, engage in fan wars, and spread solo or manti ideas. This is not something that you can do on ARMY YouTube. YouTube is the one recommending some channels over others, and you cannot really block them. On Twitter, you need to think critically about the accounts you decide to follow, but I consider most fan bases to be very professional. It's the personal fan accounts that need some skepticism before following them. Maybe you don't think it's necessary to follow ARMY fan bases in other platforms because YouTube guides and funny videos are enough to be updated, but they are not, and you won't really notice how much you're missing out by staying only on ARMY YouTube. The positive side is that this platform can work as both a social platform and a streaming platform. There's no Spotify ARMY or Apple Music ARMY or Tidal ARMY. I mean, there is, but they cannot interact with each other in these platforms. Platforms. On YouTube, however, we can talk while we stream. I talk about it multiple times, but if you're not sure why every single army should stream, please watch these videos. In summary, the industry does everything in their power to make us stream and buy less. Facts. Because BTS's success is not the industry's profit, so they cheat, minimize, and steal from BTS in the hopes that their army becomes lazy. So to prove them wrong, the best we can do right now is get back to our mentality from 2017 and 2018, when army were accomplishing things with no industry support. I already talked in detail about what we can do to maximize our streams and go back to our 2017 mindset, but those felt more like suggestions. So in this video, I will be very clear. Okay. Hey, Bora. I want every army watching this video to participate. If you don't want to share this video, that is fine, but you can still share the ideas. So, Number one, avoid watching color-coded videos. These are not official videos by BTS and every view goes to a random K-pop channel, not to BTS. These become billions of BTS streams lost. So if you're one of the ones complaining about YouTube deleting views on official music videos, you should not help them by watching these unofficial videos. Number two, do not write spam comments. We've been saying this for years, but comments with emojis don't freeze views. That is a myth. The only way emojis could freeze views is when it's all you write again and again. But writing a comment with one emoji or two won't affect views. What actually can be considered a bot is someone replying no emoji to every comment. So don't copy and paste your comment everywhere or your views will be deleted. Mm. If you see an actual spam comment and someone already called it out, either ignore or like the response. But responding the same thing over and over again can be an excuse for YouTube to consider your account a bot account and delete your views. Number three, it's act true. normal. True, By this, true. I mean the YouTube definition of normal. This means log into your YouTube account turn off autoplay and don't loop the videos. Turn YouTube's volume all the way up and control your computer's volume. You cannot really watch a video with less than 480p quality, so make sure it's at least this number. Watch other BTS music videos, dance practices and bangtan bombs as well as other unrelated videos you like. Most importantly, interact with the videos. If you want to go back 5 or 10 seconds to rewatch your favorite part, do it. Like the video, leave a comment, and respond to other armies. Number four, forget about the first 24 hours rule. A lot of people stream a music video a lot of times in the first 24 hours and then forget about it. The first day views are important, but longevity, believe me, longevity. longevity is so much more valuable. So remember to stream every day. In the first 24 hours, it's better to not use playlists because YouTube recognizes these views days after. But for longevity, it's okay to use playlists occasionally because sooner or later, your views will be counted. 
What I still prefer to do is use playlists the days I'm very busy, but the other days I manually add the videos to a queue. This takes me less than a minute and it has the advantages of a playlist. Finally, remember to make it fun. A streaming is simply listening to music, yeah. so don't only use Spotify. Listen to BTS from their music videos while you clean, drive, cook, or study. If you don't have the or work out time to listen to music, take four minutes of your day to watch at least one music video a day, because one is better than none. Just remember to switch one BTS video and one solo video every day, and prioritize the new songs. And just a heads up, when streaming Amygdala, try to do it manually, because when it's on a playlist, it may not play. Since there's explicit content, you need to accept the conditions. So mm. if I'm very busy and need to use a YouTube playlist, I always play Amygdala first and then click on a playlist or start a queue. Number five, get YouTube premium. If you can afford it and you really want to make sure that every single one of your streams is counted, get YouTube premium. You won't get any ads, you will be able to listen to videos while your screen is locked, you will have access to some free movies, including Burn the Stage the movie and the series, and you will automatically have a YouTube Music account, which is a streaming platform just like Spotify or Apple Music. I you use will music be able to listen to full albums, make your own playlist, and easily switch from audios to music videos. So that's it. ARMY YouTube has a lot of potential, and I really hope we can all reinvent this space. Let's be careful with the way we interact with reaction channels, let's ignore clickbait and K-pop drama channels, and let's talk about important releases and the fandom's goals while we watch these funny edits and music videos. Run! Oh, take two out now, Neo T7 BTS single. Run, 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 run. Bora Bora Bora, you out you have outdone yourself with this video. Great video. Honestly, uh, I'm surprised. Um You know what? You you came with the heat, I gotta say. Oof. You put on those flaming gloves and you didn't hold back. Um but you know what? It was a very necessary conversation, I feel like. A very necessary conversation. And I'm happy because I feel like um while Twitter and TikTok got their own behemoths and their own kind of system, I feel like if people could kind of get organized and work together here on YouTube, we can create even more magic. So I'm very happy that you uh, said what you had to say. Um, seeing myself in your video once again, in a positive light, I am very happy. But I want to say, if you ever feel like I have been led astray or if something happens, you know, let me hear it. And that goes for you guys as well who watch me. Um, I do a lot of reactions, but look, I'm no different from you. So let's let's keep that in mind. And, um, you know, I don't know what to say. Honestly, I'm... <laughs> we got off clean. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, genuinely... Uh, Bora, you make some really amazing videos, I gotta say, and you talk about the right things, and, and you do your own research, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the time and effort, because 25 minutes and keeping it cohesive and keeping it flowing and making the video the way it is, and all of, and this segment ending it on how we can do, you're not just berating or you know criticizing those that need to be criticized, rightfully so, but you your intention is very clear. Your intention is to make uh, the YouTube army space a better place. And you've put out some guidelines uh, for how we can do that. I definitely agree with you. I 100% agree with um, everything you're saying. You know, everything you said about reactors, everything you said about, um, you know, the Patreon stuff, the make sure you know who to follow. Honestly, anyone coming into my channel right now, they will see a ton of videos. So may, may, maybe that will give the wrong impression. I don't know, but at this point, you know what? I'm not even looking um, for growth. My goal isn't growth, uh, but I'm really just enjoying, you know, what we're doing here. And uh, I hope I can uh, at least hope hope that I can help people with with, with with some votes and some other stuff that I uh, I got in mind. But uh, thank you, thank you for being this voice. In the community, really. Um, that's all I had to say, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring back the um, the news segments. 
and we'll see how that goes. It's probably going to be like like one, and I'll stop doing it for like six months, <laughs> like the last time. But <clears throat> yeah, uh, I see why a lot of people recommended me to watch this. I don't consider myself a reactor first or a YouTuber. I consider myself an army because I don't really do, I don't really do what a traditional YouTuber do. I'm not making merch, you know. I'm not interested in sponsors unless it's <laughs> unless it's like something BTS related, of course. But um, like, I'm not yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Thank you, Bar, once again. I will see you guys soon. Stay safe and. Don't forget to stream. Take two. You know what? While we're at it, let me pull up the goals. I did show it on live, but let's see. Okay, here we go. Goals for take two. Drops in less than four hours. We have YouTube views uh, one, 1. 1 million first day. We can do way better than 1 million first day. Four, point, uh, four to 5 million on day one. You know what? These are all goals that we can crush. Everyone, let's do it. We can do better than top 50. Come on. Let's let's stick together. Let's stream. Let's work hard. And uh, most of all, besides working hard, let's enjoy. Because at the end of the day, like Bora said, you know, it's it's BTS's music. You can literally enjoy it no matter what you do. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.